Oral history, the purpose of oral history, is to draw out personal information, knowledge, and experiences that would have remained hidden. Uh, you know, interviewing ordinary people who uh, saw extraordinary events or ordinary people who led ordinary lives in extraordinary times. To me, storytelling has a beginning and an end, whereas oral history is just an ongoing uh, saga, if you will. I mostly think about my mother's family and my mother. She was always very proud of her French Huguenot heritage and of her Dio family. She wanted certain things of her life to go to Huguenot Street. And one of them was um, a Libertyville coverlet was in her family barn. Um, and she kind of rescued it. It was basically being used as a horse blanket. Before she died, she um, gave me the coverlet and she asked me to take care of it. And I remember her words until the time was right for me to give it to Huguenot Street. Started working at Washington's headquarters state historic site, Hasbrook House. And one day I'm doing a tour and this woman keeps raising her hand like one of my students would do. So finally I have to call on her and she keeps asking me, what about Jonathan Hasbrook? And I gave her the standard spiel of who Jonathan Hasbrook was. And she says, but I want to know more because this was their house. And later on, I started talking to her outside and she was a Hasbrook descendant. And you know, I started writing on Jonathan Hasbrook and I started lecturing on Jonathan Hasbrook. And many, many years pass. And then I meet someone named Marietta Schneider and she said, how would you like to come and work for us as a consulting historian? And I said, um, yeah, I'd like that very much. And that's where I am today. The history I've liked has always been not the history of great men, but the history of rather ordinary people, people that I can relate to. I spent probably the better part of 20 years trying to get back to the street. And now that I know even more history about it, it even makes it that much more amazing. The stone houses were, I think, the second or third buildings built here. You know, because when the, when the Huguenots moved down from Kingston, they weren't living in stone houses right away. You know, it takes time to build them, right? So what they did is they would live half underground and half above ground in these pit houses. So we knew about them from records, but we never actually found one until we did the sewer line right next to the Du Bois Ford. The pit houses looked kind of like a square with one quarter of it taken out. So it was like a little stubby L shape. Huguenot Street has a bunch of artifacts we found in the pit house. But the most interesting one was one that we ended up having to kind of try to keep secret for a little while when we found um, an Indian Native American burial right in that one notch that was missing from the house. So when 300 years ago or whatever it was when, when um, the Du Bois family was digging that pit house, they actually came within two feet on several sides of disturbing a, a several thousand year old um, Native American burial. Because once we uncovered the top of the skull, we reburied it again. We had fenced the whole thing off. We had the public works department and the police kind of camped out overnight. But the interesting thing was that I had just fairly recently learned that I was a descendant of Louis Du Bois. So it just kind of had this interesting s synergy where, uh, you know, my 14th great grandfather dug this house that we had uncovered and lived there and had just missed this. And that's why the work of Stork Huguenot Street is so important because they're the people who are keeping us, these stories alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.